there, you are back with Arbiter for another tutorial on Carries Mod. Today we're going to be looking at wire inputs and outputs and wire physics, hopefully. Now I've had a problem with the last two a few tutorials I've done in that they've run over 10 minutes and I've had to cut bits out so I'll try and keep this as short and sweet as possible to get through everything on time. So then, uh, first off, advanced input. This is basically, it holds two numbers on your keypad that when you press you set a maximum minimum values and it will change depending on where you start. So let's set that as zero. Um, I'm going to spawn a wire screen just so you can see what's going on. Ignore the fact that it says distance. Um, I've just realised I've started doing this in a high resolution. Just a second. Okay, hopefully that should be better for you. And you should now see that I've set where is it? Advanced input. There's two key. Uh, two keypad for increase and decrease and maximum minimum values as well as how much they change. I've got the moment set of three so we're going to set that and wire it up so that the value of this is the same as the value of that. So when I now hopefully press plus the value increases. If I press minus the value go goes down. Very simple. I'm going to keep the screen there just to show a few points as I go. Next up we have um, advanced pod control I'll go into another time because that's quite a good thing to know about and I want to have some more dedicated time. Constant values, I, w I touched upon this the other day, if I was to wire it up say right that's one, the second value would be two, depends on what output I choose, depends on what the output is, it's very simple. Um, dual input, basically you wire it up to have two keyboard commands to have two different values, at the moment it's one negative one and zero when it's off. So if I were to wire this up now, if I were to press uh, plus it's minus one, if I were to press enter it is one, if I was to not press anything it's zero. Very simple. So you can set that to whatever you want so that when you press whatever button it outputs whatever value. Um, a dynamic button is basically the same as a normal button but it looks shinier. If I were to press it it goes green, if I was to not it's just the same as a button. You can set whatever values you want for on or off very very simple. I uh, don't know much about iPods and graphics tablets. I did try and have a look at them before I started making this but I ran out. I didn't quite figure anything out. All I know is that they link into vehicles and this is for drawing something but I can't quite figure out what. Number pad input and output um, work quite oppositely. You, for number pad input you press a button and it outputs something in wire. For number pad output it takes in a value from wire and outputs something on your keyboard which is quite good if somehow you can't press anything on your keyboard or you want something to happen automatically that's governed by something on your keyboard. A plug, this is sort of like a radio, which we're going to get into, in which it takes in various inputs and transfers them somehow, although I haven't quite figured out the transfer yet. Pod controller, like an advanced pod controller, like I said, we'll go into it another time. A radio, right, I will demonstrate this. Um, you have to set a channel, obviously radios go on channels, and the number of values you have. You can choose whether it be secure or not. This is just whether or not you want other people on the server to see what you're up to. So, two radios on the same channel. I'm going to have a button here of five and two, let's say. <coughs> so, wire this up so that the first value of this radio is the button, and wire this up so that it receives the first value of the button. So you see there, although the things aren't touching, the screen is receiving the value of the button. I will change it, the screen is now displaying 5. So all, of, all the radio does is transmit data from one radio to another that are on the same channel. I'll go into radios in greater length in a, in a future tutorial that I plan on doing as well. Um, a two-way radio works just the same, except instead of putting it on a channel, it's only two radios and you have to link them using the right click. And there they go, they pair up and their ID is one. And that's how two-way radio works. Um, text receivers, I'm having a bit of trouble with at the moment, I can't actually spawn that. My wire's gone a bit mad, so we just leave that out for now. Forcer is something quite interesting as well, force multiplying the distance you want it to force at. It has two things that govern it. It has um, velocity and force. Wire that up. Velocity 280, if I was standing in the way I'd get fired backwards, there we go. So that's good for firing things away. Um, next up, grabber. I tried working this the other day, I didn't quite get it. Hoverballs, still not quite good. Hydraulics, right, I've created my own little 
platform for this. Um, I think I covered hydraulics in another in another tutorial earlier on in that it just varies the length and you can make things move up or down depending on it, which is all well and good. Um, igniters speaks for itself, sets people on fire, nailers never used, prop spawners. Um, a prop spawner works very much the same way in that a normal one would, in that you tell something to be a prop spawner. And then instead of having a keypad, you have a. I've, I've got to get rid of that 5 and 2 set. Alright, instead of having something that spawns when you press a button, th th when you press a keypad button, it fires when you press a button. And there you go. And another one. Very simple. Um, prop spawners, thrusters. Thrusters I covered in my first tutorial, so she should understand quite well enough with the multiplies, minimum and maximum, bi-directional. Bi-directional basically means that if it's a negative value that it receives as an input, it will go backwards. It's sort of like the push and pull um, in normal tools. A trail works very much the same as a normal trail. A turret, same as a normal turret, only they're receiving inputs from numbers instead of from your keyboard. Um, a user is quite a good tool, if I could demonstrate. Uh, I can't if I could twist that around, which I can't, so I'm going to have to... So, as you can see, there's a beam here that's being fired out, and if I set this button, let's see, I've got a 1-0 button here. If I were to set it right in the path of the beam, which is there, I think, I think that's in the beam, obviously 1 and 0, but if I were to if I say I couldn't reach over there, I could say to use that while I'm over here. So now if I press this, it is fired and it's set it to 1. But if I would press it again, it's pressed, it's almost like you can extend your use key to, th to that. So that you set that as whatever you're looking at and then use. And that's very useful and very simple. Um, vector thrusters never used any of these. I wouldn't know how they would work. Maybe I'll learn at a later date. A weight tool, very much what it says on the tin. <coughs> if I were to create a button, blah blah, say 100, and say that the weight of that is equal to the button, the weight of it will be 100 when I when it buttons on, and nothing. Well, it would be one because you obviously can't have negative weight. And that's that. Um, weight, the weld constraint latch, I don't know what that is. Again, very new to me. Um, wheels, very simple. You spawn a wheel, you set the direction forwards and backwards. And you can set when it a go, brake, or speed mod. I don't know what speed mod is, but um, go and brake are uh, very. So if I spawn two buttons for toggle, for. So let's say that to go you press that, to go you press that button, and to brake you press that button. So that's already one. So let's say it's go, and there's the wheel spinning, as you can see, I would press brake, it should have hopefully not be going anymore, but it is. Um, so obviously the brake needs some work, but otherwise you get the idea. So um, I think that is it. Except for winch, I will show you the winch. It works very much the same as a hydraulic, but it works in a slower regard most of the time. I, I don't, I'm not sure on this one. <coughs> if I set this as a hundred and this is one, you can also use the smoother gate with this, just like you do with the hydraulic. It has in, out, and length. I'm not sure what in and out means, but length pretty much speaks for itself. I was to unfreeze that. There you go and then unpress it and it drops back down. Very simple. And that's everything for wire physics and wire input and output. If I've ran over on the time, I'm sorry, and I'll make two part videos or do these both in greater detail. So, goodbye.